Hi, it's John Mac here, just doing a quick video to uh, show you how to set up a bitstamp.net account and uh, open an account. So go to www.bitstamp.net, make sure you've got HTTPS at the beginning. Click on open an account. I'm going to whiz through these because they're quite simple really. Uh, first name, second name, email, country, register. So now uh, they've sent you an email, so you need to go and look for that. Uh, it's got Bitstamp or no reply at bitstamp.net. And it's got your customer ID and password in it, as you can see at the bottom of this uh, email here. So, and they've also um, tell you that the password has been automatically generated and you should change it as soon as you log in for the first time probably a good idea so let's log in with your with your ID and password that they sent you and if you see this uh, unless you're American and these things apply to you just uh, click no on all of those and click save uh, thank you very much so uh, go to our account change the password put the the one that they've just sent you in there and a couple of new well a new password in these two fields and click change so now you're going to log back in with your customer id and your new password that you've just set up and so that's been done uh, let's check the security if you download a PTF, uh, pdf guide it's for google authenticator uh, I don't know Duo, and seeing as this is for Google Authenticator, let's go with that. Click click on Enable Two-Factor uh, two Authentication. You'll come to a page like this. Uh, print this off and keep it safe, uh, as because if you lose your phone when you've got this set up, you won't be able to get back in unless you've got this auth authentication key. Um, obviously you can get back in by contacting the company but that's usually quite a convoluted process so this is a good idea um, and then once once you've got that set up they'll ask for a verification code which will be on your phone and uh, then you'll be able to enable the um, the two-factor authentication and the simple way to do that is once you've got the um, uh, the app on your phone you can scan the the Q code and it sets it up automatically however uh, if we look at how it's done on my phone uh, this is the authenticator there and and you also download a barcode that will be in the instructions that you've downloaded and so you click on there a page like this in the middle opens up and then if you click on the left hand menu button at the bottom of your phone uh, this little menu will pop up with set up account how it works settings and so on and forth and you've got your these two options really on how to set it up so let's go over here and have a look at that so uh, if we look at enter key provided which you've printed off and you're keeping safe so you put that key in, uh, that key in this bit and you enter the name of the account and in this case it's bitstamp obviously click add and then you'll be set up or you can scan the barcode and that will all be done automatically for you and you'll get a page like this you can see at the bottom here I've got my uh, my ID uh, at bitstamp and then you've got a little timer here because these numbers change every 30 seconds and it's a really strong security feature so it's well worth doing um, <clears throat> verify account is the next thing we need to do so if you click on the video instructions you'll get a video that will pop up like this it's 1 minute and 13 seconds long and it tells you exactly what you need to do but I'll just whiz through it a little bit with you anyway and uh, what you can do is fill out your name and address again um, your date of birth and you scroll down the page if you see this declaration again just do what you did on the first bit you know if you if you saw the first bit so all no's or all yeses it'll be one of those and um, 
So you, you click here to select the type. You've got passport, driver's license, and national identity card. If you use the driver's license or national identity card, you need to scan the front and back of them, which is why you've got two choose file buttons here. Uh, the passport is only one image you want, but it's to be the full uh, double page where your um, ID uh, photo is. So you've got a. Uh, some sites will just take one, but on this it's got to be two. And then you've got proof of residence, which will be a utility bill or a bank statement or something from, you know, council tax uh, document that would do. And uh, just follow these instructions as well. And you've just watched the video um, recommended, so you'll know exactly what to do here. So if you uh, if you click on choose file. Uh, it'll open up a little window where you go and, and search for the item that you want to upload. So I've got the passport here. And uh, having clicked on that, you can see passport.jpg there. So that's ready to be uploaded. You put your passport number in there, the, the date of issue and date of uh, expiration, and do your proof of residence and then click submit request. So uh, about 48 hours on the outside and then you should be verified. Uh, but what you can do in the meantime is you can verify your phone number. You've got your country code, you put in there your mobile or landline number, whichever you choose, and then submit. And you'll either get a text or a phone call with this code or a code. Um, you put that in there and verify and that job is done. So now we want to move on to buy some Bitcoins, which is why we're here, really. Uh, this section here is really for when you've got funds already in your account. So let's concentrate on uh, buy Bitcoin with a credit card. So you get a page like this. You can choose euros or US dollars. I've chosen US dollars, obviously, uh, and I'm going to purchase 100. And these are the three options that you've got. So I'm going to go with this. So. When I click on there, it tells me to look out for this uh, URL uh, in, in the address bar after I click continue. First thing I want to look at after checking the URL is that it's only going to uh, charge me 100 US dollars. Fill the, the form in. Make sure you uh, check uh, select your country as well. Uh, tick on this little box to say that you to say that you've uh, read the terms and conditions. Whether you do or not is up to you. And just notice that Simplex CC UK uh, will be on your credit card statement for this payment. And once you've done all that, you click continue. It'll send you this little uh, email with a with a verification token in it. So you're looking for Simplex support or support at simplex.com. Click on that link, it'll tell you your emails verified. You continue to the card section so you can put the card details in here card number, uh, your name as it appears on the card, usual stuff, uh, ex expiration date, security code, which you find on the back of your card at, at the end of the, uh, the signature strip, and you click pay now. So I'll do a little video just to add on to the end of this video. So that will come up next in a second. Uh, but thanks for watching this. I hope it helped. And I'll see you on the next video. Right, so we're going to click on buy by Bitcoin, uh, buy Bitcoin by credit card. Click on US dollars. And then click buy. And now continue. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to cover a lot of this up for security. So you're not seeing any input uh, but um, obviously you've got to fill in all the details there I've filled in and gone continue so we're on the the um, the payment details on the card now so you fill all those parts in click on pay and we're waiting for things to be processed at this point because my card is Halifax through that
verification process that they do. So the payment's been approved, as you can see. Going back to uh, Bitstamp. And that says um, your order will be processed after Simplex completes your verification. So this all takes time, so I'm editing bits out here. So now you can see it's finished on the 30th of November there. So the payment's all gone through. I uh, we're just going to do a quick video on here on withdrawing Bitcoin. You can see some that I've done before, they're finished. That's how yours will end up. So now you want to go to uh, click on Bitcoin in that little menu there. First thing you do, put the amount that you're going to withdraw or send to somebody. It's the same thing. And then you want to pop the Bitcoin address in here and then give it a label over here. And that means that if you have to send to that person again, you've got a record of it and you know it's their, their Bitcoin address. <clears throat> and then put your two-factor authentication code in this section here. And it's going in. And just quite simply uh, click withdraw. And that's your job done. Uh, you've got to go and uh, confirm it an email. Just click on on that link. Now it's saying waiting to be processed. That's as much as you can do. It'll just happen. And then it'll end up looking like this one we've finished at the end of it. No point in waiting. So thanks for watching.